hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. I've got another three-way gluten-free tasting today. Instead of just IPAs though, today I'm going to be drinking a Gans Vienna Lager by Beerly. It is dedicated gluten-free, so I assume that the entire brewery is a gluten-free brewer um, out of McMinnville, Oregon. <clears throat> There's going to be a blonde ale by Evasion. And I'm guessing this is also, yeah, dedicated gluten-free facility. Huh, it's also out of McMinnville. That's interesting. Huh, I wonder if there's a relation between the two breweries. I mean, a lot of times you'll have, you know, brewers work one place and then leave and set up another set up their own shop somewhere else or nearby that's really common so i'd imagine there is a lot of relationship between the two it's just interesting they are two dedicated gluten-free uh beer making facilities in the same city next we have the psychophilic it's a cold black ipa cold and black ipa also crafted in a de dedicated gluten-free brewery by ground baker brewing out of Portland. Um, I'm going to do these hopefully by order of intensity of flavor. I would expect a blonde ale and a Vienna lager to be pretty comp, pretty uh, both relatively light. The Vienna possibly slightly more though. I guess a blonde ale, if it's an American blonde ale, it's going to be a little more hop. So it, it really depends. Um, these are probably going to be pretty equal. And this is not going to be a head to head because they are three different styles. So I'm not judging which one is better, like I did with the three IPAs uh, previously, but uh, simply my observation of these beers. I don't believe I've had any beers by either of these companies before, so it'll be interesting to see how they, uh, how they taste. Um, and once again, these all came from the gluten-free shelf of my local Total Wine. Uh, so, Anywhere you'll find a Total Wine, I'd imagine you're likely to find a gluten-free shelf. Uh, I don't know if you'll necessarily find these. These are quite local to me. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what, you know, the Total Wines you have in your area, what do they look like, or the, the liquor stores you have in your area, what do they carry regarding gluten-free beers. Anyways, let's open them up and get started. Okay, none of them have exploded like the, uh, like that other one last week. So that's good. <laughs> Let's pour them out and get started. Um, interesting. I think when I opened this one, I noticed some really similar like syrupy sweet smells like I tasted or smelt with the, um, with some of the IPAs last week. Okay, so the blonde ale. It's interesting it there's a hint of red in it that's that's quite interesting um, I would expect this to be generally more straw colored and this decidedly lean this leans decidedly towards honey um, I mean it's still light it's just as interesting that the redness that I'm getting in that relative to other blonde ales I've experienced uh, Vienna lager that's essentially that's Mexican beer that's that's your Corona uh, that's your um, Ale Smith something 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 I can't remember um, it's a cerveza cervezas are Vienna lagers and cervezas are kind of the last great stand of the Vienna lagers um, there's history involved there uh, Vienna lager is kind of falling out of popularity in Germany and such um, you, you typically only find them in Mexican beers now uh, so I'm expecting this this should be equivalent to a Corona or, a, you know, a, a craft, you know, Corona is the mass market. But if you're looking at that broad style, um, that's once again, also quite red relative to the style. It's got a lot more head than the, than the pale ale, which is also interesting. And a black IPA is going to be an IPA brewed with much darker malts. So, Amber malts, crystal malts, um, maybe even something darker. 
and it will have a you will expect it to have a stronger roasted malt character compared to or a non-black a regular IPA um, I mean in order of, of malt magnitude you might say it's a IPA is a pale ale and then IRA India red ale would be your amber your red and then further down further dark more roasting of those malts gets you the IBA the India black ale um, besides that the recipe should be pretty much the same it's just how dark they get those malts and therefore the flavors that they impart. What the heck am I doing here? That way, that way, that way. Gotta look good. <laughs> so uh, let's start right here with the Blonde Ale by Evasion. So very little head to this and really not much comes up when you agitate it. That's interesting. I mean there's a little bit. Ooh, okay, it smells dry. That's good. Maybe some celery? Green apple? Hmm, and I, I get a hint of antiseptic, like a, an alcohol almost, with, but like a, a sharp alcohol, not, not like a green alcohol. That's interesting. Huh, it smells interesting. It doesn't smell, it doesn't smell sweet like some of the IPAs did last week. Um, so I'm expecting this to be drier and crisper, which is what you want in a pale ale, so that's good. Let's look at the Vienna. And while that had a lot of head when I started, when I poured it, um, it's not very quick to come back. That smells a barnyard, but I don't know how many of y'all have, say, driven through Stockton, California on Interstate 5. Um, there's a lot of cattle yards. It's Stockton, Stocktown. It's, it was where the cows were loaded onto the trains from the ranches around central uh, California. And the, I don't know how whether or how the, the cattle is still involved in the trade there, but there are large areas where um, cow manure is stored. <laughs> Sorry, Beerly, to be associating you with this, but <sighs> there is a decided <sighs> pile of cow dung five miles off kind of smell to this. You know, and I remember last week, or last, with the IPAs, the gluten-free IPAs, there was a, a, an unexpected, slightly unpleasant odor on the funky side of those beers as well. And I wonder if it is just a result of some of the alternate lower or non-gluten grains that are used in this process. Do they have that more... <laughs> <laughs> dirty side of the barnyard smell to it that's that seems to me a likely case given what I've smelled here it's not not all unpleasant I would definitely prefer to drink this in an open glass versus a closed glass just to prevent the odors from building up there's also maybe some popcorn in there um, I mean, once you get past the distant manure, uh, there's some grassiness that's kind of interesting. Maybe some melon. Hmm, interesting. Uh, yeah, this does have malted millet. Also has malted rice. I wonder what this one has in it, if it says. It does not. Oh, water, millet, rice. Okay, so similar. Yeah. And with the black IP. So this one has a much longer ingredients list. This specifically lists sorghum, rice malt, millet malt, quinoa, brown rice syrup, Belgian style candy syrup, cane sugar. Uh, this is also much higher IP or uh, ABV. This is a 6.7%, this, this psychophilic. So this is meant to be a pretty heavy hitting IPA. 6.7% versus, I think these are both in the four, four range. Um, 4.8 and 
So those sugars are going to be directly translated by the yeast into more alcohol. Uh, but that is a very interesting grain list on there. And, and the use of three different syrups, brown rice syrup, can, uh, Belgian style candy syrup, and cane sugar. That's, that's interesting. Pineapple. Um, like pineapple syrup, like pineapple candy. Uh, not really any of the kind of off barnyard smells that I picked up in the other IPAs. This one does have a lot more head to it. And it is a, I would call it a medium bodied beer based on its, its viscosity, the, the, the apparent thickness of the beer. It looks real pretty. I mean, the way that the bubbles get stirred down into the glass, it's a, it's a nice color. Kind of like if you had, you know, black coffee in a glass cup. That would be about what you're looking at here. See, so yeah, I kind of pineapple, um, a little more grassiness, um, maybe like red apples, and once again, kind of a a medicinal. Well, what? Not once again. Also, kind of a, a medicinal, um, like the like the, the children's vitamin syrups that you get. A little bit of coffee, so that, that bodes well for the, for the roastiness, but I would expect a lot more of that. I would also expect, out of another black IPA, I would expect a definite coffee, possibly dark chocolate, though more coffee. Um, I would expect more like woodiness, possibly, and I would expect to be able to smell the hops. I don't know that I'm smelling the hops in this. Um, of the three, I mean, they smell very different. They are very different beers. Uh, this, the, the Vienna, Vienna Lager smells the least appetizing. Um, and we'll see how it tastes. No judgment on the taste yet, just the smell. Uh, these two are probably about equal, the Pale Ale and the Black IPA. But let's dive in, eh? No. Uh-uh. No. <clears throat> uh, if you've watched my gluten-free IPA video, which is probably posted before this. Um, hey, look over there and you'll see it. I don't know how to do that. Well, I know how to do it. I just haven't done it yet. Anyways, I don't know if it's going to be there. I'll see if I can put it there. Um, I commented or I told the story the very first time, the very first time I had a, a gluten-free beer. And it was, I found it to be diluted and uninteresting. Uh, diluted and boring. And there just wasn't a point to it. Like, if, if you're drinking this, there's other things that are gluten-free that are tastier. So why are you going to drink this? It's not even a high enough ABV if getting sauced is your thing. But that's not why you should be drinking beer, so whatever. Um, this, this isn't quite as weak as that one, which was a rice blueberry beer, as I recall. And was... It was just thoroughly unimpressive, uninteresting. There was nothing to it. This, I'm expecting a mild but clear hoppiness. I'm expecting a, a cracker-like dry maltiness. And instead I am getting three-week-old pear juice mixed with sink drippings. Sorry. Um, that, nah. Mm -mm. Skip the evasion. Don't bother. Skip the evasion pale ale. Um, I'm going to go get a glass of water real quick. Okay. Back. Unimpressed. Not worth it. There's better drinks out there. Lots better. It, it doesn't taste anything like its style, and 
yeah, anyways, uh, nothing else to say about that. Uh, okay, so Beerly's Gans Vienna Lager. So once again, we're looking at this to be um, uh, malty. Once again, toward the dry side, it's, it's a very light German style beer using uh, very nicely lightly roasted malts. Um, you're expecting it to be pretty clean. You're expecting it to remind you of those really delicious Mexican lagers. Those are Vienna lagers. So that's what I'm expecting this to taste like. Oh, gosh, that smell. The smell continues into the taste. Um, wow. Uh, okay, so we get a little more apple. Grass. But it's... It's like... You know when you put a pile of grass, you leave a pile of grass that's kind of, you know, freshly mowed for a few weeks and it starts to smell pretty funky? Um, well, it's that plus a dog turd. Um, and... Yeah. <laughs> the things I do for science. <sighs> um, okay, so this at least has decidedly more flavor than the Evasion Pale Ale. I will give it that much. There is a maltiness to it. I am guessing the issue here is that the malts they use, and I'm gonna guess that it's mostly the millet uh, you know, the, the rice beer that I've had is not, it's not offensive, it's just weak. There's nothing to it. It brings no body to the game. Um, I'm guessing the millet has a funkiness to it. And if you've trained your taste buds to the point where you can enjoy that or appreciate that, good. I'm guessing, so I'm guessing it's the millet and it just brings this, this really advanced barnyard. Um, I like the funkiness you find in a Saison or a Beer de Garde or any of the other like wild ale styles, which are also described as barnyard, but that's kind of a, kind of more of the, the, the well-groomed and cleaned with lots of meadows around kind of barnyard where yes, there is that, that animal smell, but it's balanced and mixed with this very nice, uh, pastoral smell and, uh, you know, flowers and haze and grasses and, and the good animal, the good smelling animals, you know, you, you know, sticking your nose in a horse's mane and stuff like that. Pleasant things. Um, this is barnyard, but, but it's, it's all in the mud. And the, what was the IPA? I'll have to remember. One of the IPAs that I had last week was actually decent and it blows these out of the water just in in being closer to I'm not going to say the real version cuz this is beer it's real beer it's not fake beer but it's it's more it's closer to what it's trying to emulate um, to what it's trying to approximate and and this just isn't this the the beerly gans vienna lager is simply for having more flavor to it is more interesting and better than the Evasion Pale Ale. But I would not pick either of these. If I was handed a glass of them, I would politely say thank you, and then I would politely say no thank you. Um, so that's disappointing. I was really hoping, because I, <laughs> I say I'm not a hop head, I'm not an IPA fan, but realistically, if you look in my fridge right now, that's about 75% of what's in there, <laughs> besides my one-off big bottles I still haven't got to drinking. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, I was really looking forward to and hoping that these styles would have some some pleasant, redeeming, tasty qualities that would allow them to to fill these particular niche, the pale ale niche and the, and the Vienna lager niche um, for people who are celiac or gluten intolerant. Uh-uh. Let's move on to, <laughs> I feel bad, psychrophilic. I think I said psychophilic earlier. Psychrophilic. So synchro, almost chrono, synchro, psychro. Psychrophilic. In love with the psychro. Uh, 
<laughs> cold and black IPA. And I have really enjoyed my, the black IPAs I've had in the past. They have a strong um, and present dark roasty malt paired with a really delicious and bracing hot bitterness. With all the sugars in this, we'll see. And with how the day has gone so far. Yeah, from this far out, it smells like, uh, like honey and chocolate syrup, which are not really smells you're expecting to get off of what you'd expect to be a pretty dry and, and bracing black IPA. Interesting. Okay. It's dry. I'll give it that. There's a tiny twinge of hops in the background. There is a black coffee note to it. It tastes better than it smells, and it smells better than either of these. Um, it starts like it's not sure what it's trying to be. There's maybe some strawberry? Um, some like rye crackers, so that's good. Uh, some, but not not really strong in the caraway, more just on like a like a, a dark cracker. Um, and then like this this dry coffee that kind of turns not from not into like a real vegetable hot hot bitterness, but more of a more of like a coffee ground uh, bitterness, which works. I'm glad there's been one <laughs> stomachable beer today. <laughs> Interesting. Maybe maybe it's the hops that really save a lot of the the gluten-free or low gluten beers. Uh, because the hops don't have gluten, so you can put as many of them in as you want. You obviously have to balance it against what are apparently simply more uh, or less well-defined flavors. Um, you cannot get the wheat or barley or rye maltiness in a gluten-free beer because those grains have gluten. So you are stuck with different beers that don't have that same character. So they will be different. That seems to be the inescapable fact here. When you're making a style where you can put more hops in it, you can approach those hoppier beer styles. So I'm thinking that's what I've probably learned here. If you're looking for a, and this is my opinion based on having tried six uh, gluten-free beers, this is not an educated opinion. It is not an informed opinion. It is an opinion still. But my opinion is this. If in your stylistic choices for beer, you would like those hoppier styles, the IPA, the black IPA, where the brewer is allowed to put in more of a traditional beer ingredient, hops, into the beer, you are going to get a result that better approximates or gets closer to the full gluten style. If you are looking for, or you are not as much a fan of the hops, you know, this might be for somebody, and I'm sure there's people who enjoy this, but as a fan of beer, these are offensive. They're, yeah, they're not for me. Um, I don't know if I'll finish this whole can. I have a growler of um, stoop brewing dank something um, that I need to finish up and one of Freya's gold a Hella's lager which is quite tasty and uh, they sat out most of yesterday so I need to finish them up so <laughs> in the interest of uh, you know drinking an appropriate and good amount uh, I'm probably not gonna finish this either but I will drink more of it. Anyways, this has been uh, me talking about and experiencing the Blonde Ale by Evasion Brewing, the 
Gans Vienna Lager by Beerly and the Psychrophilic Cold and Black IPA by Groundbreaker Brewing, all from Oregon. I would not ever drink the Pale Ale or the Gans Vienna Lager again. I would not turn down a psychrophilic if that was all that was offered. Um, so I think I'll leave it at that. Anyways, I've been chewing the brew, and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.